What's up guys, my name's Luke and welcome back to Motion Design. So I've been creating a lot of environments recently for some client projects and one thing that I've faced uh, a lot of problems with is HDRIs. So there are a lot of big places that you can get HDRIs from and a lot of them are really great. But the thing where I found a problem is that when I'm trying to create like stylized environments, it becomes quite difficult to use an HDRI with those environments. I wanted to see if there was a way that we could create our own HDRIs, or at least things that kind of act as HDRIs. Um, mainly not in the terms of lighting, but in the terms of background environments. I mean, you can use it for lighting. It's just not the most effective way for lighting. This method would, you would definitely need to do additive lighting on top of that. But when you're doing stylistic landscapes, you usually have to do that anyways. So as you can see over here, in this render over here, this is kind of what we're going to be aiming to achieve is this kind of like surreal looking um, sky over here. Uh, you can see that at the moment we have control over it. Uh, we can get say, different looks depending on where we're looking at the HDRI and we're able to have control over the colors. Uh, we can also affect the background and we can change the colors of the clouds. Let me show you over here. We can now go and let's just lower presets and we can get different colors really quickly and really easily depending on the look and feel that you're going for. Cool. So let's go back to where I was. Cool. So yeah, this is a pretty simple method. Um, it's nothing too crazy, but I thought I would kind of share it with you guys because I'm sure there's been problems with you guys where you've also been looking for specific stylized HDRIs and you haven't really found the right ones. So I'm going to show you how you can go about creating the right ones for you. Cool. So let me just show you the setup over here. We are, let me turn these off, turn this back on, on again, and let's go in here and let's just start this from scratch. So let's take this out. And what we're going to use is a C4D shader. So the general way that I, we, you know, usually go about, uh, creating these type of gradients is, you know, you add a C4D shader, you add a gradient and, you know, you flip it around and then you just create a gradients, you know, like that. And then now we have this like soft gradient going up and that's kind of the standard. It's kind of the default. It's kind of what everyone's done. Uh, but now what happens if you want this, but you also want clouds to make it seem like it's somewhat realistic, even though you're doing like something surreal, let's go and let's swap this around. And we're going to use this as a mask. So when you're creating this, I want you to think of this first layer as the mask layer. So where the white is, is where we're going to see clouds and where the black is, is where we're not going to see clouds. So depending on the look that you're going for, you might want to change this around a bit. And this allows you to have a certain amount of control over where the clouds appear. You can also change the blending mode and stuff like that, depending on the type of look that you're going for. But for us, let's just stick with this over here. Cool. Let's go. And now let's add a layer. That's it. Position this over here. And in our layer over here, let's go and add a noise shader. So there's one thing that's a bit annoying about this process is that things don't update. So you'll see now if I had to render this, now it works. I I don't know why it does that, to be honest. It is, uh, it's quite annoying. Cool. Let's go back in here and let's set this to overlay. Cool. So now you can kind of see what I mean is that where the white is at is where the clouds are going to be. So let's go, let's go over here and we're going to select or at least for me, I'm going to select over here. Let's set this to about 25 and 800. So we get these kind of like streaks. Cool. Look at that. We're getting these really cool streaks, which is kind of exactly what we want. So uh, another method that you can do is that these things aren't updating is that you can just go over here, turn something on and off, and then it'll update. To be honest, it's really annoying. It's a bit frustrating, but um, it's okay. Sometimes it works though, which is a little bit weird, is that sometimes it does just update in the viewport. When that happens, I have no idea. If you guys know a fix, uh, maybe shoot down the comments. We can help someone else as well. 
Cool. So let's go back in here and now let's add some colors. Let's go and add another gradient. Let's go in here and we want it to be going upwards. And let's kind of create some colors over there. So let's maybe add a blue and a um, orange. See what that looks like. That's the nice thing about this method is that it does give you a lot of kind of like creative control over what is happening. We didn't change the blending mode. Let's go back and let's change this to overlay. Try this again. And now we're getting some pretty cool uh, effects over there. I think I want this to be a lot lighter. And I want this to be a lot more. I don't know if that will work, but let's see. I mean, that looks kind of green, but maybe if we swap these around. Cool. I mean, let's just go with that for now. We can always adjust this later. Uh, let's go and I was just want to increase the length of these, of these clouds. So it's going over a little bit further. Let's go and create a plane over here. And let's just add a basic material onto it. Um, this material, I, I just did it beforehand. It's literally just a but normal material with a little bit of bump so that we can pretend as if we have water over here. Let's go turn this on and off. And off, cool. And what is happening? There we go. Cool. So now we got the basics of our sky over there. Now this looks cool and this is adding our cloud layer. Now we can go and we can add a, another dome light. Go and add graph over here. And now we can create this color for our sky. So let's go into our graph. Into our graph, there we go. Look for D shader. Plug this in over here. Let's make this a little bit bigger so we have a little bit more resolution. Let's create gradients and let's make it going upwards and let's go from black to kind of like a dark blue we want that I wonder what would it look nice if we invert it cool and yeah now look at that we have our own custom HDRI over here. So the nice thing about this is that now with this, we can, can kind of control how much we want. We can control the looks that we want. You can get a bunch of different looks just by, you know, rotating this around, but we can also get a bunch of different looks just by going back into here, going to our noise and just changing our noise. Cool. Now we're getting a bunch more softer clouds. So what this is looking like. Getting a little bit more like cold clouds, I guess. Wrong way. Double wrong way. Yeah, it's giving, it's giving us that like kind of cloud, like like cold, wispy cloud look. I mean, we can also add different ones. Get, I mean, that's kind of looking like a, you know, cell shading could work if you're, I mean, with that new cell shader, could work as a cool custom background over there. You can also clamp these values a little bit more and get some cool results. Uh, but yeah, let's just go back to our original one. Oh, wait, I think our original one was the uh, B something. No, I can't, maybe I'm wrong. Let's just tinge to over. Ah, it was over. Okay, cool. Another thing that you can do with this is that you can layer noises on top of each other. So we can create a another noise over here. Set this to overlay as well. And now we're adding more to that. So say now you can add different ones where you can have like one layer that has these like really wispy clouds where we're not seeing much. So let's if we clamp these values that we're mainly only seeing just the highlights of them. Then you can add a, another layer up here. Let's maybe make this 215. Let's bring this up a bit. Change the seed. 
Uh, why are we not seeing? Oh, it's because it's over there. Uh, 50. This will be quite ugly. Let's make this a 20. 10. So if we're able to get some like streaks. And now you can see that we're able to add like a bunch of different looks to this. So this obviously does not look that great. But I just want to show you the kind of flexibility that you have with this method where you can add as much noise that you want and you can get all the different types of looks that you could want and think of. So, so. odd. I must have accidentally swapped these around or something. Cool. I mean, you can kind of see over here, as an example, just by changing up um, this same setup over here, just this has a little bit more refined colors in there we're able to get this like really cool, really weird, abstract result. And it's like now, you know, we could add some landscapes in the distance. Remember there. Yes, yeah, I mean, it's definitely not the most amazing artwork right now, to be honest. But I just wanted to kind of show you guys that you can create your own custom HDRIs, and this has kind of saved me a few times, especially when you like have a specific look that you're going for, which can't figure out like the right uh, way to get the clouds and the specific look that you're going for. Uh, yeah, sorry this stroke got a little bit messed up at the end. I'm not actually too sure for what happened. Um, sometimes it's a bit annoying, annoying the way that this works. But I hope you guys learned something from this. It is just more a more of a niche tip. Uh, I'm not sure how often you would use something like this, but. For me, at least, I've been using it quite a lot recently uh, for these like surreal projects. And yeah, I hope this helped you guys. Uh, if it did, let me know. If you want a project file, let me know, and I'll upload one with like one of these HDRIs. But it's pretty simple to create. I mean, it's literally three layers. But yeah, let me know. And I hope you have a good one. And I'll see you soon. Peace.